no Downton Abbey tonight, so uh, I'm, not that, I'm not that keen to get home, to be honest. So sorry about that, everyone. I'm not a long preacher, so you're all right. Okay. That was great. It was great what Lizzie pre um, shared there, and uh, it kind of gives us a lot to think about, doesn't it, really? I think you have to remember in church life that the most important thing is people. And uh, the great thing about the work that Lizzie's doing is it's touching people's lives and it's making a difference. And God has a real heart for the poor. And there are some really poor people she's working with. So, um, yeah, we, it was great to hear um, the work that Lizzie's doing there and uh, good to connect and to support her as well. We're looking at 2 Samuel chapter 6 tonight, if you've got a Bible. And uh, just wanted us at the start of a new year just to think about our journey and how, um, how this year will pan out for us, um, for us just to consider that in order for us to reach our destiny, the, dest the, the destination that God has for us, that it's important that we know what it is in our lives to walk in obedience to God's word and his principles. And uh, they're laid out there that we might live fruitful and blessed lives. And uh, the, the, the scripture that we're going to read together this evening is a story, of, a tale of two journeys. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, um, this little gold box that was so much um, part of the Old Testament um, worship, uh, it was transported in two times, it was transported two times in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. The first time it was transported, it didn't reach the place where it should have gone. And as we look at the scriptures this evening, we'll see that the reason why it didn't reach its destination is because it was carried in disobedience. It wasn't done according to the pattern that God had laid out. Um, but as we, as we read the, the story, we'll see that the second time that the ark was carried, it did reach its resting place. And it reached its resting place because the second time, David did it right. He did it according to God's principles in the word. The Bible says that there is a path before each person that seems right, but in the end it leads to death. And uh, we just need to consider and take seriously the fact that if we're going to reach all that God has in store for us, if we're going to achieve that, then we need to know what it is the people to live our lives according to God's word and his principles. Because he's laid them out in order for us to live fruitful and effective lives for him. What have we got up there? Yeah, so if you flick forward to the next one, that would be good, Justin. Thanks. Uh, oh, sorry, go back to Jay. Yeah, so there's, the, there's, a, there's just a picture of the Ark of the Covenant. Sometimes we can talk about this box or this Ark, and we can kind of think, what, what's the preacher going on about? Okay, well, that's what I'm going on about. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant was, the play, was, was kept in the Holy of Holies, and uh, inside the Ark of the Covenant um, was uh, uh, some manna, from the desert, it was, there was Aaron's rod, and also there were the, the Ten Commandments that uh, Moses received from God. That was all kept in the box, and that, we haven't got time to go into the detail of it this evening, but that box was very important in terms of the worship of um, the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Um, and so the story that we're going to read about, when it says the Ark of God, it's talking about this little box here, so that you kind of get some context in your mind. Okay, so we'll read the story, 2 Samuel chapter 6. We're going to read the first um, 15 verses, and then there's just two or three principles that I just want to draw out for this evening as we step into a new week and all that God has for us. Dear yeah, Father, we just bring your word to you tonight, and uh, we just pray, Father, that you will illuminate it to us, that you'll speak to us by your spirit, and that, Father, we would understand more, that we might know you in a deeper way, and that we might live more effective lives as followers of Christ. Help us, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, David again brought together out of Israel chosen men, 30,000 in all. He and all his men set out from Bala of Judah to bring from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Sorry, just a little bit more context because it does help. The ark of the covenant, it needed to be in Jerusalem where God could be worshipped. But up until this time, it wasn't. And so the, the account that we're reading together this evening is David bringing the ark from outside Jerusalem to Jerusalem where it could go in its rightful place. Okay, 
So this is the journey. They're bringing the ark to Jerusalem. Verse, um, let's pick it up from verse 3. They set the ark of God on the new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Io, the sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. And Io was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with songs and with harps, lyres, tambourines, cistrums and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah, poor chap, reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down, and he died there beside the, the ark of God. Then David was angry because of the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day that place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed him and his entire household. Now David was told, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went out and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David danced before the Lord with all his might while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and with the sounds of trumpets. So there's an account in the scriptures there of, a, of two journeys that took place. The first journey was a journey that ended in disaster. Um, Uzzah, the poor chap, reached out his hand to steady the ark because it was falling from the cart and God struck him dead. And then we see that the ark spent three months at the home of Obed-Edom. And uh, those of us who are familiar with that scripture will know that God really blessed the house of Obed-Edom. He was blessed. Why was he blessed? He was blessed because he had the ark of the covenant there in his home. And then three months later, David makes the second journey. But this time, David makes that journey in obedience. And we'll look at the detail of why it was disobedience the first time and the obedience the second time. The first thing just to note this evening is that the journey of disobedience led to death. The journey on that particular day would have looked so right. You know, the Bible says that there were, there were kind of people rejoicing around the ark. They even had tambourines and lyres and cistrums. From the person who was looking out on to the procession that day, they would have perceived that everything was being done so right. But as we look at the detail of how God wanted the Ark of the Covenant to be transported, we note that in fact, even though everything looked right, it was not being done in a way that God had instructed. Um, in, in 1 Chronicles 15, we'll look at that scripture in a moment, but um, God, God um, outlines to David why he was so upset and unhappy with the way that David transported the ark the first time. Um, David says it was because you, the Le Levites, did not bring it up the first time. Okay, let, I'll leave that bit. Let me, let, I'll probably better if I just explain it to you because it can get a bit deep. The reason, why, the reason why God was very disappointed the first time with the Israelites in the way they transported the ark is because they didn't transport in the correct way. Okay, the Old Testament is very clear. When God laid out the principles for transporting the Ark of the Covenant from place to place, there were a few things that he said. The first thing he said, that it had to be transported by Levites. No one else was to touch the Ark of the Covenant. That's what God said very clearly, the instructions that he gave in the Old Testament. The second thing that he said to them was that it wasn't to be transported on a cart, but it was to be picked up and it was to be transported with poles. And the poles were to go through the ringlets that were on the Ark of the Covenant and it was to be carried. That was, the, that was the instruction that God gave to the Israelites in how they should transport the Ark of the Covenant. Now, David did not do it that way. The way that David did it is he put together a new cart 
which will look very impressive. A new car. Wow, David, you've got a new car. You've got people with tambourines. You've got cymbals. Everyone's dancing. This looks so great. But the thing is, it could look great to those that were standing around that day, but that didn't mean to say that it was being done in obedience to God's word. And I think for us as Christ followers today, we have to be careful in our own lives that our lives can look great. Everyone can look at us and say, oh, that person's got it all together. But really, only we know about the detail of our lives and if we live in our lives in accordance to God's word. Because a principle that we draw from these scriptures that we've read together this evening is that God is concerned about the detail of our lives. God is concerned about the detail of your life and he's concerned about the detail of my life. It doesn't matter how it looks to everyone else. It's how obedient we are being in walking our lives before God. All of us tonight, we can put a facade on, we can put a good face on, we can try and <clears throat> live a life that looks okay to everyone else. But deep down, God is concerned about the detail of our lives. And, it, unless, and if, unless we know what it is to live our lives in obedience to God's word, then we are living in disobedience. And that was the problem. David, in this story that we've read together, on the first journey that he took with the Ark of the Covenant, he took the convenient route and not the correct route. That's what he did. It was just more convenient for David to get a new cart than it was for him to round up some Levites and to get the proper poles to carry the Ark of the Covenant in a way that honoured God. And we can look at Uzzah, and we can think it's a bit harsh on poor old Uzzah. All he did was the Ark was on a cart going up to Jerusalem. The oxen stumbled. He reached his hand up just to kind of stop it falling off, and God struck him dead. But you see, when we don't do things God's way, we need to understand that those ways can lead to death. And not just in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Galatians 6. Let's listen to this, Galatians 6. <clears throat> Paul writes, don't be fooled. You can't outsmart God. A man gathers a crop from what he plants. Some, plea, some people plant to please their sinful nature. From that nature, they will harvest death. Others plant to please the Holy Spirit. From, that, from, that, from the Spirit, they will harvest eternal life. You see, when we sow to our sinful nature, when we live in, in disobedience to God's word and, his, and the Holy Spirit prompting on our lives, what happens is that we come to a place where we spiritually die. But that's not what God wants us for us tonight. God wants us to be those who walk in obedience and sow to the Spirit so that we can have life. The second principle that we see on this first walk of disobedience that they took, which, landed, which ended in death, is that no amount of paraphernalia can replace the need to simply obey. 2 Samuel 6, 5 says, David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with songs, with harps, lyres, tambourines, cisterns and cymbals. <clears throat> you see, they were passionate about what they were doing. The Bible says there, that they were celebrating with all their might before the Lord. But it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing something in disobedience to God, but you're doing it with all of your might, it doesn't replace the need to simply be people who know what it is to obey God and to obey his word. And David that day, as I've said previously, it would have looked very impressive to those that looked on that day as that procession came down from outside of the city of Jerusalem up to the city of Jerusalem. It would have looked great. People would have said, wow, this is the real deal. David is back. He's restoring the reputation of God. Isn't David great? But no amount of apparatus can replace the simple call that God gives to his church and his people to simply obey. Even all of this that we enjoy tonight, buildings and PA systems and you know projector screens, you know fellowship, all of those things, all of the stuff that surrounds, it's all good stuff. But unless it's undergirded with obedience, then it's not going to be something that has lasting fruit. We need to be those who know what it is to obey. We don't just want to look the part. We want to be the part that God wants us to be. So that was the first journey. <clears throat> the second journey that we read in these scriptures together this evening was a journey of obedience that led to destiny. We see that the second time round, David learned his lesson. And uh, we'll just read this short scripture and then I'll just wrap up with these two brief points. 
If you can turn to 1 Chronicles um, chapter 15, I'll read this scripture because it shows that David recognized second time round that he'd got it wrong the first time. And if there's one thing that we can learn in our lives, it's this, that sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we sin. Sometimes we think things we shouldn't think. Sometimes we say things that we regret afterwards. Sometimes our actions don't please God. But the message that we see, even in this story that seems really harsh for Uzzah, is that God is a God of second chances. And God comes to us again and again and again. That's the grace of God. We get what we don't deserve. God comes to us again and again with his grace. And uh, the great thing about this story, that we, as we've read it this evening, is that the first time, David got it so wrong. But during those three months when the ark was at Obed-Edom's house, David had time to reflect on what he had got wrong. And in 1 Chronicles 15, in these verses, is recorded the conversation that David has between the first journey and the second journey. And in 1 Chronicles 15, verses 12 to 15 we see some dialogue that, that David has with the Levites. And he, what, what he is he doing here is he's recognizing that he got it wrong the first time. But the great thing is, he might have got it wrong the first time, but David is determined to get it right the second time. And again, that's a lesson to us this evening, that as we make mistakes, maybe some of us this evening in, in our own lives, we might even have habitual sin. There's a particular area in our lives that we fail again and again and again in. The great thing is that if, when we recognize that we've done things wrong, the Bible says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from all of our sin. And wherever we find ourselves tonight on our spiritual journey, when there is sin in our lives, whether we are people who have surrendered our life to Christ many years ago, but... Even in surrendering our lives to Christ, we know this evening that there are times where we need to come back to God in repentance and we need to say sorry. And we need to recognize where we have got things wrong on our journey and we need to be those people that have the courage to come to God and to say, God, I got this wrong, but Lord, will you show me how I can put this right in my life? And that's what David had. He had a revelation of what he had got wrong the first time so that the second time when he walked the same path, he was able to get it right. And we see here in 1 Chronicles 15, verse 12, as I said, this is a conversation that happened between the first journey and the second journey. Verse 12, David says, He said to them, You are the head of the Levite, Levitical families. You and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring the ark, the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. See, that's so great. That even though on that first journey he got it so wrong, he had a revelation of how he should get it right. And as we read the account in the, on the second journey in the book of Samuel, we see that this time there was no new cart. There was not even a lot of fuss and bother. I don't think it even records that there were tambourines and cymbals and everything else. The important thing was that the Levites were carrying the ark and they were carrying it with poles because that's the way that God had prescribed for it to happen. And actually, if he had done it that way to start with, there is an argument to say that no one would have, the oxen wouldn't have stumbled, Uzzah wouldn't have had to reach out his hand, and that, that first journey would have ended in a way that God wanted it to end, with the ark being where it should be. Obedience starts with listening. And uh, David, in those scriptures to, that we've just read there, he said himself, the problem was, he said, we did not inquire of the Lord. We did not inquire of the Lord. And uh, my heart is that at the start of 2014, together, um, for you and for us as um, churches serving in this area of um, Warrington in Latchford, that we would know what it is to inquire of the Lord. To say, Lord, it's a new year. What is it that you want to do? We don't want to rush ahead of you. 
We don't want to walk in apathy. Lord, we just want to know, what is, it, what is it that you are saying to us at this time so that we know what it is as a church to walk in obedience to what you want us to do as a fellowship together? And I'd encourage all of us, again, at the start of a new year, to know what it is to come before him before we start the journey. You know, let's determine that the first journey that we take this year is going to be a journey of obedience, that we'll know what it is to hear the voice of God and to be obedient to it. God always wants to speak to us. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer. Isaiah 55, verse 3 says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. And in our, in our lives as New Testament Christians, as followers of Christ, if ever we want to know what it is that God is saying to us on this next leg of our journey, one of the best places to kind of read and to meditate on is um, Matthew chapter 5 to 7, the Sermon on the Mount. If you want to know what God's will is for your life this year, read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, and just allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Because Jesus brings so, such rich teaching about what it means to be a follower of Christ and what it means to follow him. And then finally this evening, obedience continues with fellowship. You have to hear God at the start, but I, there's more to journeying with God in obedience than just hearing from God once. God wants us to, God wants us to hear from him again and again and again so that we know what it is to stay on track. It's really interesting as David takes the ark on its second journey that this time um, <clears throat> he takes it kind of a step at a time. Uh, in verse 15 of 2 Samuel 6, it says, When those carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And uh, the Lord really spoke to us as a church about these verses. Um, he, God just reminded us that on our journey in following Christ and seeking to be obedient to him and listening to his voice, that it's not a bad thing every six steps just to stop, to listen, to worship, and to hear what God has to say. There are some um, commentators, some scholars who say, um, you know, David just sacrificed once after six steps. But there are others who believe that actually just for David to sacrifice once as he took the Ark of the Covenant up, it would have been a bit mediocre for a king of David's stature and wealth. There's a lot of um, commentators who believe that what actually happened is that David sacrificed every six steps that he took. And it would have been a, um, probably about 600 steps from the house of Obed-Edom to the place where the ark would eventually rest. So potentially, David stopped 100 times on that journey to bring a sacrifice and to connect and to worship with God. And I think for us this evening, that's a great lesson for our lives. You know, I'm sure all of us this evening, we can look back at times in our lives where God has spoken to us. And by the grace of God, we've been obedient to it. We said, Lord, that's you speaking. I'm going to do what you've told me to do. But I think <clears throat> a great place to be is where we're in that place where constantly, day by day, step by step, we know what it is to stop from time to time and just to say, Lord, what is it that you want to say to me? Just to pray like the psalmist prayed, didn't he? He said, search my heart, Lord. See if there be any wicked way in me. Because I want to be someone who knows what it is to walk in obedience this year. Because I want to be someone that reaches my destiny this year. Because I've walked a journey of obedience. Obedience to God and obedience to his word. And this year, as we take this journey, there'll be lots of decisions. There'll be lots of forks in the road. Whether we make this decision or that decision. Our lives, as we follow Christ, are full of choices. And my prayer this evening for all of us is that we would be a people that know what it is to make choices that honour God. Choices that honour Jesus. So that as we take those steps on life's journey, when we come to the end of it, we've walked a road of obedience that has led to life and not a road of disobedience that has led to death. Psalm 25 verse 4 and 5 says this. It says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Let's just pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you for the journey 
that lies ahead of us this year. Your word says, Father, that you have prepared good works in advance for us to do. And uh, Lord, I pray that um, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that this year will be a year when we know what it is to walk in obedience to your word. Father, we don't want to be a people that are distracted. We don't want to be a people that do things or carry things that aren't according to your will. But Father, this year we want to be that, um, those people that know what it is to hear your voice and know what it is to obey you. We thank you this evening for the story of David and the ark of those two journeys that he took. We thank you, Lord, that there's a picture in the middle there just of your grace and your blessing, that opportunity to, that opportunity to have a second chance. And Lord, I pray for all of us this evening that none of us will feel that we've journeyed too much or that you've given up on us. Thank you, God, that you are a God that comes to us again and again. And Father, whatever last year held for us, whatever failures there may have been in our lives, Lord, we thank you this evening that you are a God of new beginnings, that as we surrender our lives to you, as we repent, as we say sorry, as we seek your forgiveness, you give us a brand new start. And Lord, I pray that that will be our story this evening. And uh, Lord, help us this year. Help us to be courageous. Um, Lord, help us to be those people that know what it is to step out for you. Lord, help us to be those people that proclaim your good news and make disciples. Because, Father, you've given us that commission. And, Father, we want to fulfill that and we want to honor you. So, Lord, we thank you for your presence with us. And we thank you for your word to us. We pray that you will enable us, Father, to outwork it in our lives as we live for you. Amen. Amen.